Hello world, I'm Chris Perillo and I am here to review the iPhone 7, which I have in my hand, but this is going to be unlike any iPhone 7 review you might have listened to, watched, experienced, because this is my review and it will be anything but short. And unlike every other, if not every reviewer, out there, uh, specifically those who claim to be tech reviewers, I'm going to spend an inordinate amount of time talking about the product beyond its physicality. Which is to say, I am still very disappointed in how media has been covering gadgets for decades. Honestly, uh, I don't trust many of them because they never really tell you the full story. And, and I think that's why I want to spend an inordinate amount of time talking around the iPhone 7. But that is still very much a part of its review. And you need to be paying attention because nobody else is giving you this information. Or if they are, that's great. I haven't found them. And those are the people that I would love to follow. Those would be the people that I would trust. Uh, I'm going to give you a lot of context because I think that's relevant. That's how I'm going to set the stage for my iPhone 7 review, this video. I've already done three or four other videos to this point uh, around the latest iPhone 7 products, my initial impressions, which were not positive before I had an iPhone 7 or 7 Plus. Uh, I think iPhone 7 versus 7 Plus, iPhone 7 versus 6S. So I've done a series already, and uh, you could watch those videos and, uh, you know, certainly potentially learn a little bit more. But I'm going to assume that you're not going to watch those videos. It's probably a poor assumption, but I I'm going to go with it anyway. So for those who don't know me, and there are a lot more who don't know me, than who might know me. I've been a fan of software ever since I can remember. Going all the way back. Um, I've been using software, not all my life, most of my life. I've been writing about software for two decades. Over two decades, really. Wow. I'm old. I've always been more of a software guy than a hardware guy. So when I talk about the iPhone 7, you're, you're going to hear a, a, a different perspective than I think what you've been accustomed to. Because you know what? All those gadget reviews out there and all those tech reviewers and all those gadget reviewers, they sound the same. And it sounds like they're talking about the same product. Why? Because they spend most of their time talking about the hardware. Maybe software gets a footnote, but... Honestly, without good software, what's the point of good hardware? That's how I feel. I've probably put a percentage on it in terms of uh, you know, the balance between what makes uh, uh, an outstanding experience. But I would likely always skew to the side of software. I think software is more critical to a good experience than hardware. And let me go ahead and illustrate that point. I've had poor hardware. Spec wise, you know, when compared uh, to their contemporary uh, competitors, devices, any other offerings in, in the marketplace at that time, I've had poor har hardware with outstanding software, and it was a good experience. It was a good product. But I've had great hardware with poor software, and it was far from a good experience. So, why then? Why then do these so-called uh, tech reviewers and pundits and, and, and people who allege to be uh, those who, who love technology, I am not one of them. I'm not, I, 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 I appreciate what technology does for me, but te tech to me isn't a destination. It's an enabler. That's it. It's not a religion to me. I got no horse in this race. I just enjoy what experiences it unlocks. And when it fails on any front, I really get testy. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. I get passionate because I care.
the video is still out there. The, the, the first time I talked about uh, the iPhone, the day it launched, I, I've been eating crow ever since. Because my experiences with touchscreen devices to that point, with mobile devices to that point, with pocket computers to that point, ha- had been lackluster at best. I had rose-tinted glasses. And then I picked up the first iPhone, somewhat reluctantly. No one was watching at the time. I picked it up. Just pretend I'm holding on to it. I don't hold on to my old gadgets. They don't, they're not worth anything to me. I have zero emotional connection to this physical product. I have an emotional connection with what it enables. So just understand that. Picked it up. Unlocked it. Mm-hmm. Opened up the weather app. One of my favorite apps. I don't know why. I just want it to rain all the time. That's what it's like living in Seattle, and I love the rain. Open up the weather app. You've probably heard the story before. And I did this. And I swiped. And the animation was so fluid. In a moment. In an instant. I felt a change rush over me. I swear. It just... I was like, wow. I felt a change. I'll never forget that moment. There's certain... Moments in your life you don't forget. You never forget your first Star Wars figure. In my case, I still have it. And you never forget those moments when you you feel this change inside you. One swipe was all it took on the first iPhone. It was so fluid. And I just started navigating and tapping around. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Unlike anything I had experienced to that point. It was so fluid. I was overjoyed. And I knew part of the back of my head, I knew, oh God, this is uh, this is bad because I've already come out and said, oh, these are the reasons I didn't want an iPhone on the first day. I left myself an out, kind of. God, how young was I? Well, about ten years younger, nine. But I've been an iPhone user ever since. From the first iPhone. And I used to very much look forward every year to upgrading. And maybe painting uh, the larger picture now. Listen very carefully to the words that I choose. That all changed the very first moment I saw iOS 7 in the keynote. And I thought to myself... This is not how it's going to ship. This is not how it's going to look. This is not how it's going to be. I, I'm a fan of change, but not for change's sake. I'm a, I'm a fan of change when it changes things for the better. And uh, iOS 7 marked a dramatic turn in terms of iOS software performance, software quality. And I'm not talking about crashes. App crashes, it's an issue all all unto itself. I'm talking specifically about performance, system-wide, design ethos that is still being cleaned up. So you're seven, eight, nine, ten. Four revisions later. Sloppiness that is uh, excusable if you don't have that many resources, right? Uh, Or if you don't have engineers or the ability to get engineers who might be world class but for a billion dollar company multi-billion dollar company inexcusable so ios 7 rolled out (laughs) i i was uplifted when i got the new iphone because ios 7 at least performed better on that device but it was still a far cry from um the fluidity of earlier uh, versions of iOS or iPhone OS or whatever it was called at, at any point in history. Don't worry, Apple will fix it. Don't worry. Uh, it's, it's, it's software. It'll, they'll improve it. They'll improve it. And yeah, they, they, they kind of did. They did. Kind of. <laughs> but with every passing revision of iOS since 7, it's been uh, one step forward, two steps back. And this plays into the iPhone 7 uh, in a much more dramatic fashion to me than any other iOS release or any other iPhone hardware release. Now, at this point, 
some people are turned off like, Bonnie says it's the fastest phone ever. It's the best phone. I don't see problems. There's no problems. Oh, you're just complaining. Let me just tell you. If you see a problem and you don't complain, do you think it's going to get fixed? Can you expect it's going to get fixed? Maybe other people don't perceive it as a problem. Doesn't make it any more or less of a problem to you, right? Well, here's the thing. I, I'm not uh, the only one. I, I've got supportive uh, 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 statements out there from people who do know what they're talking about and aren't just random anonymous YouTube commenters or eggs on Twitter in terms of the changes and in terms of how far Apple has come So even if you don't perceive the same issues I, I do, they're there. And I'm not the only one who sees them. Not going to apologize for that. So let me give you a little story. Uh, I improved Google Maps on iOS. Personally, no, I'm not a developer. But uh, when Google released uh, their Maps app for iOS, of course I was happy. It's nice to have an alternative. It really is. I believe in having backups. You never know. Um and it's not about Google's map quality being better than Apple's map quality. And I know each one of them had issues in terms of catastrophes. I don't want to get into that. This is what I want to say. Uh, they kept releasing revision after revision after revision of Google Maps. And I kept waiting for it to get better. And I was like, what is going on? Finally, I, I had enough. I'm like, why is it so bad on iOS? Why? And I had I tweeted this. I had an engineer get back to me. Someone who's apparently local must have been following me somehow. Popped up on a search or whatever. He said, "What, what are you talking about?" I said, "Why, when I drag my finger around, is it dropping frames? What, what's wrong with the frame rate? It's jittery. Like this is like this is everything Android is, right? The jitter, the Android jitter. And I'll get to that in a bit. Remember, this is not about a holy war, okay?" Now, I'm not trying to start that. Everyone's got their own personal choices. I don't care what yours is. I really don't. I genuinely do not care about what phone you use. I don't. I have zero care, negative one care, about what phone you choose to use because I'm not going to tell you what phone you need to use. It's not my job. It's your job to decide what's best for you. So I complained. I said, what's going on? And he replied, well, we've limited it to 15 frames per second to save battery life. I was like, what? He didn't reply and say, say what again? I dare you. No, he didn't, he didn't do that. <laughs> he could have, that would have been funny. But I, I was shocked. I'm like, are you kidding? Why? I mean, we've got plenty of battery life. We can plug in our device. You are seriously limiting the experience of this software intentionally. I don't know how I squeezed it into a tweet, but I did. He got back to me, and I, I didn't really hear that it was going to be resolved, but I had some indication that they were going to look into it. The very next revision of Google Maps for iOS had that throttle removed. Google Maps from that revision forward was closer to 60 frames per second, if not 60 frames per second, limited only by hardware or loading or any other app discrepancies. But that 15 frames per second throttle was lifted from Google Maps. Your experience improved. You didn't even know it. Maybe you didn't even see the difference. Maybe you did. You're talking to someone who can see the difference between a fluid 60 frames per second and a 60 frames per second with a drop frame, a skip, a jump, a jitter, a hiccup. Bless your heart, you can't see that. Some people don't get motion sickness, you know, with the whole moving around of the things on the screen. Apple provides a toggle for that. It mitigates a lot of the problems iOS has, not every one of them. It covers them up in some ways. Um, but just like some people get motion sickness, I get frame rate sickness, for the lack of a better word. A physical reaction that is far from positive. It, it, it is jarring. It is, at this stage in development, inexcusable. Uh, on any platform. I mean, the fact that you still see it is just, I, I, good for you. You don't see it. Good for you. You see it and you can deal with it. I can't. 
and I didn't have to deal with it pre-iOS 7. Design nightmares aside, that is a completely different topic. One battle at a time, Chris. One battle at a time. So, I improved your experience to use Google Maps on iOS. You may not, you may not even notice. That's cool. That's that's awesome. Now, it is possible that they did it on their own without any intervention. Without it, just it was going to happen anyway. It is entirely possible. But that would be awfully coincidental. You'd have to be wearing a big tinfoil hat to believe that. Occam's razor. Uh, I, I believe that it was because I took the time to say, dude, this is wrong. And you know what? It is. It was. Google Maps had the potential of being 60 frames per second on iOS. It wasn't. Why? Because there was an artificial shim or uh, something in place. To artificial. It was there. A limitation, a, a throttling to save battery life. Now, some people say, Chris, you took away my battery life. Hey, I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> uh, I get a charger, you plug in your phone, you know. Battery life something we got to deal with, right? Well, this is apparently the number one complaint that most people have. So what happens? Um, companies optimize for battery life. That's awesome. That's the way it should be, right? You know, cleaner code right? Throw better hardware at it, but we're reaching that, 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 that ceiling, right? Where, 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 where hardware can only do so much. We, we're, we're just limited right now. And I know a lot of people complain about battery life. I guess, uh, my complaint has never really been about battery. Battery life to me is like an assumption. It's just an assumption. It's just, it's just going to, you use a device. If you want to save battery, don't use your device. That's the, my number one tip for battery saving. Don't use your device. There you go. Done. Clean. You're done. I, I just, I saved you battery life. Just don't use it for everything it was designed to do. So, uh, I always reserve judgment. Um, you know, when, when, when I'm playing with beta software specifically, and it's labeled beta, I always, I can't necessarily say much about it, but when it's final, and I still see issues um, that I am not getting paid to fix. I am not getting paid to point out. I have a problem. In my initial impressions video, when I uh, walked into an Apple store and, and saw in person uh, the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, I was appalled at the performance of iOS 10 on these devices, these alleged fastest smartphones on the planet these um flagship devices from apple and i i swear i i was having an emperor's new clothes moment in the store looking around saying am i the only one who sees this lo and behold i'm not and again this is where some people come in i don't i don't have a problem with mine it must be yours it's not the problem systemic I'm happy you can't see it. Doesn't mean that it's it, it's not there. You don't have to believe that it's there. It is. And the people who know know. And you can't unsee these things. That 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 is a frame uh, drop. That is a frame rate inconsistency. You can't unsee a drop, you, a skip, a jitter. You can't. And once you're accustomed to smooth performance, which we were, you, it's par for the course. Until it no longer is. And I've been waiting one, two, three, four revisions for Apple to clean up their act in software. They'll fix it. They'll fix it. They'll fix it. Really? Even if they told me, we'll fix it. When? That's not how technology works. I don't need technology two years from now. I need it now. This is, one of, this is the device I'm using now. You never buy a product based on the promise of what it's going to be. Ever. That's really, really, really short-sighted. Well, I got the product because the next revision is going to have X, Y, and Z. You buy it for what it is now. Because you don't know what it's going to be, when it's going to be, how it's going to be. And I've been saying that for years. So, I got tired of it. And so, I just started writing. <sighs> Eventually, I, I, I sent it off to Phil Schiller. It may have bounced into spam. You may have probably never seen it. He probably deleted it because it was really... Um, I was as direct as I could have been and clear as I could have been, citing as many examples as I could have. Never got a reply. Sent it off to uh, Craig Federighi, trying to be as respectful as I possibly could, but also saying that, dude, I, I, can't, I can't do this anymore. 
That letter is, I mean, it's kind of public. It's in a Google Doc that I've been sharing openly with everybody because I've also been documenting other design inconsistencies and, and frame rate issues, as I saw in default uh, experiences as well as uh, customized experiences. To me, the, the problem is systemic. The problem is that iOS changed somehow, fundamentally. The, the plumbing changed such that everything that touched the plumbing is tainted. I mean, I, I could blame third-party developers, but the problem is, is Apple is not adhering to the own their own standards that they've set forth at, even at WWDC. I can I can point at two talks, so even one in the, in the, the recent WWDC where they're talking about frame rate issues. Physician, heal thyself. But not enough people are complaining, so Apple's not going to fix it. More people complaining about battery life, so they want to address that. They want to make it a point, right? Well, more people are complaining about, and I'll get to the iPhone 7 in a bit, other things that are, are potentially hardware-related than software. But to me, you don't have hardware without software. Or you do, but it's just, it's a brick. Who cares? I don't. It's, it's the reason that, 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 that Apple won me over so many years ago, because it was the only viable option at that point. This week changed that. Not just because of the failings of Apple with their latest generation of iPhones, their latest iteration of iOS, but truer competition. I, I don't want to talk too deeply about that because that's really not the, the topic at hand. It's the iPhone 7. So, for the first time since I can remember getting a new iPhone, the operating system ran worse on faster, better hardware than the previous gen. I couldn't believe it. Can't believe, still can't believe it. Now you might point to a synthetic benchmark, say, look, it's got a score of 50 billion. It's better. No, it's, it's not how it works. I see, you can't, can't put a score on experience. Doesn't work that way. So you, you, you I don't care how, how fast it runs. If it still runs horrifically, it still runs horrifically faster. So, <laughs> even my wife saw the difference. She's not a software person. She said, is, is it just me or is it actually running better? Well, yeah, it is on the older hardware. Of course, the apologist, well, don't worry about it. Apple will fix it. I've heard that story before for the past one, two, three, four, three, four years. Well, it's, it's, it, they'll fix it. They, it's new hardware and they need a. Never. This is the first iPhone out of the box. We're talking iOS 10.0. Um, I will reserve my uh, my judgment for 10.1 when it's final, when I do my review of the iPhone 7 Plus, which for the moment, I'm intending on holding on to for the moment. I also reserve the option to sell it should I perceive there being a alternative. That's all I'm going to say about that right now. I am running the beta, by the way, of iOS 10.1 public beta. Um, I have submitted a radar with the, the bulk of my uh, um, issues that I've made public, um, specifically, largely in relation to frame rate stuff. Here's my concern. Here's my problem. Well, Apple isn't fixing it because it's not a priority. I understand. Fix all the bugs. That's a thing. But since when did Apple make decisions based on how many people complained? I should never, to me, it should never be an issue. Why, why, Apple's job is, had always been removing objection. That's, a, that's the number one tenet of being a great salesperson, right? Remove objection. I, the fact that these issues are there. It, it, why do I have to play bug reporter? I appreciate that they've opened it to a public beta and that the apps are crashing less. That's that's great. I'm not talking about apps crashing, which happens. I mean, it's, it's software. It's always going to get better. <laughs> Theoretically. The problem is, where it needs to get better, it is not. It's so hard to talk about software because I can't... I can't relate that experience and how disappointed I am when I've seen such greatness 
coming from a, 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 an entity only to find just a 180. It just almost not overnight, but uh, this has really happened over the past few iPhones that I picked up. Um, this wasn't an exciting thing for me. I, I was really worried. I was really concerned. I had trepidation. I had fear getting the iPhone. First world problem. Well, I live in the first world, dude. Get over it. So I was worried that what I saw in store I'd have in hand and it turned out to be true. I, I don't fawn over the latest hardware. They, 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 they're they not all the same, but chamfered edges, curved edges, curved glass. Eh, it's nice. Who cares? I have, mm. How's the software? How's the experience? Because you know what? The hardware melts away with a good software experience. You don't think about the hardware. Unless there's a shortcoming for you. So I, I think I've set the stage appropriately. This is going to be uh, the best I can detail my experience with the iPhone 7. Which is most likely one of the last iOS products that uh, I pick up without seeing it in person first. Nine years. It's been a good run. We are uh, now past uh, the five-year anniversary when the world lost Steve Jobs. And uh, it's hard to let go. It's hard to let go of something that you used to just relish. It's not a part of my identity. It's just a gadget. But, you know, I, we, we use technology so much. It's so integral in, in our daily lives and our experiences. Our primary computer, man, these smartphones are our primary computers. They're pocket computers. Anybody who says otherwise doesn't know their ass from their elbow. These are PCs. They're far more personal than my first PC. That's for sure. They're PCs. Get over it. So... <laughs> Some people have an issue with a protruding lens on the back. Okay. Well, when you set it down, it kind of rocks. Okay. Get a case. Got a case. Case works. There you go. I like protecting it. Well, I like holding on to my phone naked. Wait, what? No, I mean, I'm clothed, but I hold on to it without a case. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's fine. Not that I'm passing judgment if you hold on to your phone naked. I'm not trying to imagine that. Please don't imagine that. Don't. Some people have an issue with a protruding lens, and it... It's like, well, I, I guess that's an issue. My issue is, does it produce better images? Is the uh, the capture quality better? Is it is it is it faster? Is it you, 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 does it do more? Is it better than previous gen devices? Now, if you watched my iPhone 6s versus 7 video, which I recorded live also with my patrons a, a few a uh, few days ago. <sighs> And you've seen my tweet, which I know only like four of you have. Um, I, I, I don't know if this is related to hardware or software at this stage. I, I don't have enough experience and I don't have any insight. I don't have an inside track with Apple. And any chance of that happening has probably gone way out the window. Any chance of ever being in, a, invited to an Apple event, right out the window. Any chance of ever getting any kind of intelligence from Apple, right out the window. But I'm going to be critical. You know what? I'm, I'm, I, got no, I, I just want a better product. And, and I know that they can produce it. I'm not the billion dollar company here. Don't shoot the messenger. So um, I started testing in my office, lower light in situations. And while the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus camera um, seemingly handled, and they did, uh, lower light situations better, and there was less noise in those lower light situations, the image wasn't necessarily consistently sharp edge to edge on the 7 and the 7 Plus, and I, I was like, wait a minute, am I really seeing this? I'd zoom in on the corner, and I'd see this, like, uh, almost like a doubling effect in almost every corner with with uh, with detail. Like, it's like a, how do I say, it's like, you know, have you ever, like, had, like, a an onion skin slide over another one, you know, the same image, and you can kind of composite them, and th then some details line up, but the other ones don't? That's, that's an extreme form of it. Well, what I'm saying is that Composition-wise, I mean, it's a wide, wide field of view with this lens. 
or series of lenses. Uh, but um, I was shocked to find that photo after photo after photo, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them had this kind of doubling effect in the corners. And I, I, I was like, wait a minute. I would have noticed that before and tried it with the 6S. And the 6S produced sharper images, by and large. Uh, maybe not as there was definitely more noise in low light, uh, but it was sharp corner to corner, edge to edge. So then I, I tweeted, I took a screenshot, saw another bit of, of sloppiness where the EXIF header information in the iPhone 7 Plus has eyesight, uh, that, taken from the eyesight camera. That EXIF header information detail is, is missing in the iPhone 7 right now. It's a small detail. Am I going to... It's just a detail, right? But something I'm just going to point out. They, someone missed it. Not a pressing issue. So, uh... So that I knew which photo I was looking at. And I started doing side-by-side -side comparisons. And, 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 and by and large, I found that some photos seem to be better on the 7 or 7 Plus in, in, in generality. But in totality, I, 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 I guess... The 6S photos were sharper over and over again, specifically in the corners. So I asked other people, it was like, can you replicate this? Because I, obviously I have this problem with my, my 7 and my 7 Plus. Can you replicate it? So they took images, they saw the problem, and I saw the images, and I'm like, yeah, you got the same problem. Is that hardware? Is that software? Could it be fixed? I don't know. Because nobody's talking about it. The media is not talking about it. No, because, because we've got to spend time talking about the lack of a headphone jack. Because that, that is the most important thing. The headphone jack. This will make it or break a device. And I'm going to give Phil Schiller and Apple, I'm going to give credit to, to them making this decision because I think it was a right decision to make. I eh, Use an adapter. I don't want to use an adapter. Really? You don't want to use an adapter? Stop using technology, okay? I, I don't want to use a cable. Stop using technology. How do I carry around an adapter? Really? It, it, it's that much more difficult for you to carry around this much more? Okay. So anybody who's complaining about that uh, Bluetooth adapter, they solved the problem. Hell, they even put in with my black iPhone 7, which I was happy about. I, I really like the black. Um, I, I wish I would have gotten the black instead of the jet black uh, iPhone 7 Plus. But uh, the cable's white. This is another detail that Apple's missed for a while. I, uh, minor thing. Not, not, not something that's, that's worth getting upset about. I hate the earbuds, though. I, they are always uncomfortable. They always hurt. Like, after minutes of use, I can't. I cannot use them. But they give you an adapter. I have to carry around an adapter anyway. I carry around a battery pack. I can't get to the headphone jack if I needed to before. I needed an adapter anyway. So, uh, not a big deal. I, you know, well, it doesn't have a headphone jack. Well, that, that's a problem. So here's where I'm going to give Apple credit. Number one, making that step. Apple said it took courage. That's a little, um, wishy-washy, but, and, and I think it would have been better if they wouldn't have explained why they used the word courage, because the way I believe that is courageous is that it's courageous to make such a radical change for technology that people have become accustomed to, right? What's courageous is that they may be impacting their sales. There are some people who said, no, it doesn't have a headphone jack. I'm not going to buy it. I, I think that's a, a vocal minority. I really genuinely believe that. Um, has that hampered my performance or my experience with the iPhone? Has not. When I need to use a headphone, uh, the head headphones, I'll figure out a way. <laughs> Where there's a will, there's a way. You can figure it out. It's not that hard. Um, mine, not even an inconvenience. It's just a change. It's not even an inconvenience. But I just spent a billion dollars on headphones. Use the adapter. But I don't want to use an adapter. Why are you using the cable in the first place? I don't know. Why am I complaining? That's where people, people say that about me. But, uh, well, we all got our things. We all got our things. But, uh, protruding lens, meh. Um, lack of a headphone jack, meh. Now, the button, the home button here, if, if it is a button anymore, I don't know what it is. Uh, it's not that physical press. Uh, has taken some getting used to. Uh, there are things that I really don't like about it, and there are things that I like about it. I, I like it. Uh, um, I like the, the Taptic engine, although I believe, even though I've got the setting turned up to 3, they need it to turn up to 11, really. I, just, I need more boom, boom, boom. I don't care how much battery life gets wasted. Of course, it may jar every other component inside, but um, 
It's not strong enough. That, that to me, that's my number one complaint about it because I, I've had issues where it's been mispre- mispressed, mistapped. It, it, it's, it still needs a little polish, not from a hardware perspective, but from a software perspective. So I believe it can be addressed. Um, using it on a table is impossible. Forget that. And that's been a use case for me, using it on the table. You can't because you get no feedback at all. But I really like the haptic, uh, the, the feel. I like, I really genuinely like that. I always liked haptic feedback, always haptic. So the haptic engine, I, 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 I like. It needs to be tweaked a bit. Um, it, it's, it's usable. Uh, apart from on the table. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't. Not, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure. I, I miss the old physical button. I will tell you that I do miss it. Um. This is just offered, you know, the, the, the waterproofing, which I, I've had an issue with before, and, you know, worried about being worried about waterproofing. It's not a selling feature for me, though. I don't even even though I live in Seattle and get all the rain, it's not a big deal for me. So um, the speakers on the seven, really nice, uh, rich sound. I mean, I was really impressed, like specifically with voice quality. It was a rich sound uh, coming from the speakers. And I was really kind of taken aback. Music, eh, they're, they're phone speakers. I mean, what can you expect? I mean, if, even if they were amazing, they're phone speakers, right? They work. They work, they work well. I, I, I was really, uh, really, uh, really happy uh, with them. Um, everything else is, you know, as far as I'm concerned, pretty standard. Looks exactly, minus the, the bumps and the, the, the changes, you know, the antenna lines that bother some people. I don't care. Um Looks like the iPhone 6 and 6S. Now, some people say, well, Apple's just boring and... Um, that That is not a selling feature. If it looks the same, that's great. Okay. I've never been not sold on the design of, of, of an iPhone specifically because uh, the software has always been usable to this point. So, I uh, 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 didn't have issues with the uh, uh, the design antenna lines that you can barely see or you never really pay attention to. Hey, if you got a signal, you're happy. Um, the the button, uh, 50-50 on that one. So, um, iOS. I pretty much laid it all out. Uh, and then some. The problem is, is that if Apple or the right people at Apple don't perceive it as a problem, it's not a problem. The problem with a lot of the things that I've talked about, and in some cases reported, aren't perceived as issues. That other people have been reporting for years aren't perceived as issues, or they're uh, low priority issues. So to me, they're not. They're, they tie into experience. They tie into experience. And, and if you don't understand that, I, I think... If, if Apple doesn't understand that, they don't understand what drew a lot of people to the iPhone. That 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 overarching experience. That so much was critical in, in terms of that 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 on-screen performance, which is now gone. Um, current betas of of, of iOS ten point one don't offer any hope at this stage, and they just released beta two yesterday. Uh, some things got better. Some things didn't change at all. And, and to me, it's like every issue that I've documented. It's like whack a mole. I'm like, and I'm I'm not talking about third party apps. I can't, I have to address those separately, right? I'm talking about default iOS experiences, sloppiness, or just frame rate issues, frame drops, whatever, jitter, however you want to, however you want to describe them. Um, Right now, uh, for all intents and purposes, iOS runs better on a 6S than a 7. 7 is faster on paper. Uh, that could get fixed. I hope it does. I really genuinely do. But uh, to me, this is th- there's something that's systemic. There's something that, th- there's a bit, I mean, I, this just shows my lack of, of experience. I've been talking with other experts, like people who know what they see and know what they're talking about, specifically one of the editors from Ars Technica, who just nailed it. Um, he, he has the technical experience to be able to back up what it is that I'm seeing these problems to me it's it's systemic there's something there faster hardware mitigates only some of the problems there's still an underlying issue and it's poorly written software it's 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 a system that's not elevating the 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 ui threading the way it used to so animations are herky jerky frame drops skips jumps 
never was an issue. And if it was, it was never as prevalent before iOS 7. Never, I swear. In fact, I can tell you one issue that persisted throughout iOS for years, and it, this would only happen like on the initial pull down. When you swipe down to pull down the spotlight, the search, there would be a skip. There would be a skip in animation. That would always happen. Always. Everything else was, for the most part, consistently smooth. Scrolling, animation, everything. Once they started throwing uh, transparency into the mix, uh, th that's when things started to choke. Even if you reduce transparency, which I've pretty much been forced to, which uglifies iOS, at which point, why are you using it? Um, it solves some problems. Some, not all. But uh, I, 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 the, maybe the hardware's not fast enough today. Maybe it will be eventually. But the thing that throws me off is, and, and it could be because of the new uh, A10 Fusion processor that they're running in the uh, iPhone 7. Sounds great, doesn't it? I, I think that they're throwing the, the animations and scrolling and transitions into the lower performing processors to save battery life. It's fine if you want battery. That's how they're able to eke out more battery life, right? I mean, not just getting a bigger battery, right? That's fine if that's what you value, right? But to me, I'd rather use an amazing device, an amazing experience, an amazing, just seamless, fluid, buttery, smooth platform and software for five hours than using the same piece of hardware with unoptimized software, replete with frame drops, skips, jumps, herky jerkies, not even and design bugs even, let's go that far, for 10 hours. I'd rather use an amazing, I'd rather have an amazing experience for a shorter amount of time than a lackluster experience for a longer amount of time. It's the difference between a sirloin steak, a gigantic sirloin steak, wait, oh, hey, I mean, um, a, a petite filet, an eight ounce petite filet with a nice Maytag blue cheese, maybe some, some melted butter, medium rare, right there. That's filet mignon versus a 24 ounce sirloin steak. That's, and to me, I think Apple with software is going for the sirloin steak quality. Do you see that? Everywhere. And I know I'm going to get slagged for doing this video in 720p. I'm doing it live. That's the that's the best that I can handle right now. Best that I can do with uh, what what I've got here. Um, so I'd rather have an eight ounce petite. Uh, 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 no, actually, not even petite. Just a just a filet mignon. I'm hungry for one. I'm really, well, I'm getting everybody hungry. Smaller steak, but I'd rather have that than a big sirloin. And if you don't. One is very rich, uh, uh, flavorful, maybe not as, uh, um, um, uh, uh, like marbled, uh, of course, because it's a filet, maybe not as marbled as a ribeye, which has amazing flavor, but uh, it's got a different kind of texture. And I've had a uh, petite uh, or filet mignon that has melted in my mouth. I mean, it's just, it's melty. It's just so rich and so good. And I've had sirloin before and believe you me there's a difference <laughs> i think apple's trying to appeal to the sirloin crowd and they're throwing out features without polishing them and they're not polishing what they've already got and that which used to be polished suddenly becomes no longer polished iOS has become a death by a thousand cuts. The iPhone has become death by a thousand cuts. It's not just one thing. When I came out and said, I, I will be doing an iOS 10 review. I will, I promise. <laughs> Bet you can't wait for that one. Um, I'm going to wait until 10.1. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Let, let them flesh out some initial bugs. Now they get their hardware and beta testers and all that stuff. I'll be doing that with the iPhone uh, 7 Plus, which I intend on holding on to for now. That may change. I get a good offer. I'm like, I'm good. Um, so I said something that was very controversial, got a lot of people really upset. They, they were trying to make direct comparisons. And I guess the way I, I phrased it was certainly to, to get someone's, to get your attention. Apple's iOS 10 is their Windows Vista. Okay. 
Let me qualify that quote, because I'm sure now 99% of the people who don't, don't understand kind of what's going on here or haven't figured it out by now don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I used to be a Windows user, tried and true, uh, going all the way back, um, was a, t- a beta tester, was a part of a program, actually got to meet Jim Alchin. Um, my number one complaints with Windows Vista were specifically in the realm of design and execution of design, and sloppy elements, just mishmash of, 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 of UI and on top of that, you know, performance issue, but issues, but most of my complaints were related to design in Windows Vista. It all, like, every complaint, I, I was like, dude, you're using Tahoma in the same dialogue as you're using MS Sans Serif. How is that even possible? And then you use Trebuchet over, what the hell is going on? So... <laughs> I, Jim actually listened. We were at dinner. It, it was a group of uh, Windows enthusiasts, whatever they call us back then. And Jim, he was he autographed the uh, Windows. I still have this, the Windows Vista Beta Two DVDs. And he he wrote, "I'm sorry." <laughs> Swear to God, jewel in my collection. I'm sorry. So when I say iOS 10 is 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 Apple's Windows Vista, I'm to qualify that iOS 10 is. Apple's Windows Vista to me. It's it's a tipping point. It's a, it, it's not even a make or break. It's 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 a questionable future for Apple's uh, quality control and software. Um, to this point, there hasn't been a viable alternative. I've been waiting, chomping at the bit for any kind of viable alternative. I know some people would claim, "Oh, this is a viable alternative," and then I see it, I'm like, "That is not a viable alternative." Nay, nay. That's that's not that's not how it works. Moreover, I'm not interested in trading one set of headaches and nightmares for another. Just not, right? Change happens for me when it's for the better. When I feel enough pain that I have no choice but to change. And that's where I am with iOS, just like that's where I was with Windows Vista. Three things needed to happen before I really started to to uh, you know, steep myself in uh, Apple's ecosystem. The first thing was uh, 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 Leopard being released. It was an amazing release for OS X. That's what it was called at the time. Now it's Mac OS. Uh, second thing was moving to the Intel platform, which would open up a realm of opportunities for compatibility. Uh, the third thing that happened was Windows Vista. So it was less about, I mean, yes, it was important what Apple was doing. It was critical, but it was more what pushed me away or what pushed me to Apple was what the company that I had been used to dealing with was doing. Now, some might say, well, Windows Vista was fine. There are some people out there who believe that. Okay. I I, I came out. I took my lumps. I said, no, it's not. And guess what? I, I honestly believe that history has proven me correct. Vista was not fine. And I said that before it was popular opinion. I said that Windows 8 was not going to be fine. History kind of uh, proved me right on that one, too. Took my lumps again. You don't know what you're talking about. Really? Okay. I was right. I was right both times. Windows is getting there. Still got a long way to go. It's getting there. It's getting there. It's not quite there yet. Um, so uh, what I'm saying is I felt enough pain, and I just felt that the Microsoft's direction with software quality was just gone with Vista. I, I, I was just angry. I was really angry because I knew they could do better. What happened? I know that I know I still know they can do better. See, it's 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 not that I have unrealistic expectations from a company that for the time had delivered something that that it was okay, was passable and there was no viable alternative. When there became a viable alternative, guess what? It became a very viable alternative. Apple doesn't really have competition. It's about it's not about this one device. See, this this is where a lot of tech reviewers throw you off. It's not about this. This is just just this is just one thing. This is just one product, right? It's about this as it interacts with that, as it interacts with that, that, this, that, this. It's an ecosystem. It's one product in an archipelago of experiences that creates one singular experience. So you, if you remove one component or you add one component, it changes your overall experience. That's the beauty of what Apple's provided. No other company has done that. Well, this co- no. Well, that can no. This week that changed. Possibly, maybe, for real this time. 
I'm talking about Google. We'll see. They, they, they've they got to do a few more things before I'm convinced, including holding on to a, a piece of hardware for longer than a year. I mean, in terms of like, are they going to just drop it? That's not that's not Google's business model. In fact, Google has a radically different business model that worries me differently than Apple's. Apple's in a completely different business. Same space, um, but Google is a different kind of experience, uh, stem to stern, but their ethos is radically different, specifically in relation to your privacy. Radically different business models, radically. I don't think that's going to change either, and that's something that, that does concern me. But in terms of providing a better experience, um, here's where I think it's, it, 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 the, the, the tide is going to turn. Um, artificial intelligence, right, being one of those. I'm not really uh, someone who's been fascinated yet by uh, 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 the uh, virtual reality. Augmented reality, I've, I've noted on several occasions, is something I'm a huge fan of. In fact, hang on just a second. We're, we're getting to an hour, so I want to make sure the chat stays up there. Um, AR, I'm very excited about. Always have been. VR, not so much. But artificial intelligence. Siri, and this is, I think, a critical thing to talk about, specifically with the iPhone 7, because they tout Siri as this value, you talk to it and does things. Siri is one of those technologies that works half the time, all the time. Consistently inconsistent. That is a technology I can't, you can't count on. I mean, imagine if you got into your car and half the time it went and half the time it didn't. Would you keep driving that car? I wouldn't. That's how I feel. And, and Siri, as far as I'm concerned, has been in a perpetual state of alpha for years. Apple's changing it, of course, you know, working on the whole intelligence thing, but they're being schooled. Apple is being schooled in a critical component of software, and that is not even the... Cause they're being schooled in design, too, but and, and now execution with the release of uh, Android 7.1, uh, specifically on a Google Pixel. Uh, from everything I've seen at a distance, haven't touched it, reserve judgment until I can. What I'm saying is other companies are doing a better job at addressing that next level than Apple has been doing. And Apple even had the lead, right? Didn't take too much to topple that. I mean, I just, I, using Siri is an exercise in frustration every time. Is it going to work? That trepidation keeps me from using it in the first place. That is not a good technology to tout. Siri has got serious problems. Doesn't, doesn't really get covered that much. I mean, yeah, they've, there are alternatives people are going for, but fundamentally, Siri is just, it, it doesn't understand or it doesn't give me any glimmer of hope that it can figure out what it is that I'm saying. And I, 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 over and over and over again, I just, I haven't had those issues with other software products, AI software products. Uh, Syria needs as much of a reboot as anything. Cause it, it just doesn't work. It works sometimes, <laughs> but it just doesn't work. <laughs> if it doesn't work all the time, it doesn't work. And when you've got a component that is critical to your experience with the device that doesn't work, what kind of experience is it? What, what, again, what does it matter you got the fastest hardware if the software doesn't work? What does it matter if you've got the fastest hard, uh, smartphone on the planet? If Siri works just as well, which isn't that well. well. I've never had a problem with Siri. Good for you. I have. I'm talking about my experience. This is my iPhone 7 review, not yours. If you want to do one, guess what? Sign up, upload your video into your own channel. We're good. I'm telling you, this is a problem I've had with Siri from almost the beginning. And I remember I even interviewed the people who started Siri, who then launched Viv 5. That's just today been acquired by Samsung. So I remember Siri. I remember that promise. I've been using it for that long. But it's, uh, it is not a selling point. You, you, be forewarned. Be forewarned. The software is ain't ready. And, and I just wonder how long this is, how far this is going to go. I mean, Apple's having issues possibly selling new hardware because, you know, the phones that people have work well enough, which is a testament to Apple doing good stuff. Whether we're talking tablets, smartphones, whatever. If what you have right now is working well enough, eh, stick with it. There's very little that is compelling for an existing iPhone 6S user to move to the iPhone 7. Some people may disagree. Well, I moved to the 7, it was better. Okay, good for you. I'm telling you, it wasn't. From my experience, 
in my review, it was not better. Not because of the hardware necessarily. Although, like I said, the photo thing has got me a little concerned that no one's, it's more concerning that no one's talking about it. Um, my, my deeper concern is the software. And if you don't understand, again, that, that, that software is, 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 is a critical component. Um, I don't think you understand technology as much as you, you think you do. I don't think you love technology as much as you think you do. You, 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 like, you like a physical thing. That's not technology. That's not what makes technology magical. It's a physical thing. I love physical, physical things all the time. My AT, ACT back here? Yeah, it's great. The smartphone app that allows me to connect by Bluetooth and control it by the smartphone. Man, the kid in me, and I'm still very much a adult, is just screaming for that. I mean, I would have loved that. Um, but that, that's great. I can look at this indefinitely. It's always going to be beautiful. Technology notwithstanding. This, this, this design looks great, but honestly, whoa, what's the point of this if it's not working? Or <laughs> you're not using it. This is, a tool, this is a screwdriver, right? It's a fancy screwdriver. Very expensive screwdriver. Uh, maybe you need more storage in your phone. 256 gig is a viable option. Very, very viable. Can't deny that. But... Um, The iPhone 7 has me rethinking a lot of things. And that's, um, it's sad because I have to recognize that truth within myself. The worst thing I could do is lie to myself because I can't be truthful with you if I'm lying to myself or if I'm willfully holding something back. Yeah, you know, I, I held a lot. But believe it, believe it or not, over the years with with iOS and issues, I've held a lot back. I've shared a lot, but I, I'm, I'm past that point. I'm like, dude, 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 dude. No one is telling you because you're not fixing it. If it's not a priority, you don't understand the product that you had. You don't understand that magic that was there that is gone. You don't understand that it's not going to take much for competition to creep up over you and nail it, and they're starting to. And as, a, as someone who loves what technology enables, I feel we all lose if we don't have good competition in the marketplace for anything, software, hardware, anything. If there's no competition, we get an iPhone 7. Now, some people, well, I, there's been competition. Eh, not really. No, not really. Apple really hasn't had much of a competitor to this point, specifically with their current trajectory. But uh, I, uh, I implore you to uh, take with a, a, a grain of salt any review of technology that does not address hardware and software equally and critically because they're not doing you any favors. Time after time, I've just been uh, disappointed that, that, that people didn't say what is clearly evident. I've documented this. I'll have a link in the Google Doc. You're welcome to read it, share it, or, or, or whatever. I, even, I like I said, I filed the radar for a lot of this. I don't. I don't have a. I don't have an extra amount of time to fix Apple's problems. B. I. That's not my job. C. That's 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 not Apple. I don't know what this company is anymore, and it's not because of the hardware, which is fine. It, the hardware looks great. I have to make some very difficult choices. Oh, Chris, you're just being dramatic. Well, you know what? When, when it comes to you and the choices that you make, you know, when, when it's something that, that you believed in for so long and, and, and then you're forced to look at it differently, it ain't easy because you got to be honest with yourself. The choices that you make. That's why I say earlier, I don't care what choices you make. I don't. I, I have no horse in this race. What's the best case scenario with the iPhone 7? iOS 10.1 was released and magically all the systemic frame rate issues and drops and skips and jumps and herky jerky and all of that Apple's default app experiences are gone. Like gone. Like, oh my God, they just disappeared entirely. I can't find one. Best case scenario. I don't think that's going to happen in 10.1. Now, some might argue, well, because the 10-year anniversary of the iPhone next year, they'll fix everything. I don't think it's that easy. 
iOS almost needs a reboot, and I don't think that's going to happen either because of the momentum behind it. It could happen. I hope it does. I reserve the right to, if I uh, decide for something different for myself, I reserve the right to change my mind again. I'm not, this is not a religion to me. This is not, you know, this is the only winner and this is the only company to do, do, do. That's not how it works. That's not how technology works. You're really, really, you're myopic if you approach it that way. One company, one product. No, no, no. You you should always reserve the right to change your mind. Don't get locked into one thing forever because that's really, really a bad idea, especially when new things are constantly you know coming out. So another scenario, iOS 11 or whatever they call it uh, next year is a, a reimagining or cleaning up of, of the problems that they had in iOS from 7 to 10. That could happen. I don't know. Apple's not going to tell anybody. Certainly not me. Um, it could happen. It might not happen. I can't bank on it. I can't. What am I going to wait for the next year to find out? That's not how life works. You don't wait for that next technology. If you're living in today, you've got to figure out your solution today. Well, what are you going to use today? When that happens, then you can change your mind. If it's something that 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 turns out to be something that is demonstrably uh, better for you. But um, my iPhone 7, that's my iPhone 7 review. I, I, I think I pretty much covered everything I needed to cover. Unless I, I, I missed something, at which point it was not my intention. I know there are things that I could have talked about too, like the, the, the wide color gamut in the screen, it, it getting 25% brighter outside. Um, these are things that are nice to have. My eyes don't necessarily pick up on all the differences. Um, they're nice to have though. They are nice to have, but not something that is a driver for me. Not, not something that I... I absolutely need in a product it's, it's, it's a great thing to have but not what uh, diminished the experience for me because uh, it's a spec right and it's a part of the experience but it's it's just it's just a part of it um so thank you everybody for tuning in um if i did miss anything it was not intentional I'm just telling you my experience this is my review i don't believe in giving scores um, it's an okay device. It works. I will, I will tell, tell you that it works. That's my score. Not a very good score, is it? But I, yeah, I, you know where I stand or sit as the case would be. Uh, thank you everybody for tuning in the, uh, the, I'll be sure to link the document, which you, you, you know, you're free to peruse or completely ignore, which most of you will. Cause you, a lot of people think I'm crazy. I may be. But you know what? Here's the thing. If they fix these problems, you win. Even if you didn't see the problem, you win. What do you got to lose? Seriously, what do you got to lose? Nothing. Theoretically. I love you. I appreciate you. But at this point, I'm going to leave you to your own devices. Today's free highlight was brought to you by all of my active patrons from chrisperillo.com. If you want access to the full TLDR episodes, both audio, video, past, present, and future, which can be up to an hour long or longer, with even more tech insight from me, plus other bonus content without ads, and support me at the same time, <clears throat> you can sign up to become one of my supernomies too. This is just a brief taste of what I'm producing for you. Again, get more through chrisperillo.com.